everybody, I'm Garrett, and you're watching Love and Bang Bang. Today we have out the Springfield Trapdoor model of 1868. Now, like I said, I've said before and I'll say it again, we are going to have a full historical series coming out on this very soon, just as soon as we can get everything together that we need for it. By the way, these particular 5070s are really the only early 5070s that are serial numbered. They didn't serial number the 66, didn't serial number the 70s but it's serial numbered on the barrel and the receiver right there a little bit of history on these uh, as you can see there's a few differences this is the first gun that they, was a two band as far as the allen conversions go a lot of people don't even call this an allen conversion because you're not just converting anymore the uh, old civil war muskets they have a receiver the 66 did not have a receiver it just had a trap door screwed down over the top about half of them will have the lined barrels from 58 and this one does have a lined barrel it's an earlier gun it was originally 58 they lined the barrel down to 50 and then they would screw it into the receiver right here and like i said that was basically the differences between this and the 66 model was it actually has a full receiver a better sight just a shorter gun and i want to show you something here that's also different than the 66 this door does not go nearly as far forward on the 68 as it did on the 66. 66, it goes almost all the way forward. Well, what they found was they were wallowing out the hinge because soldiers were throwing it so hard it was going too far forward. So on the 68, they made it to where it comes back only so far. And they only made this 68 for a few years and they realized this is not the best setup because now they're not throwing it so far forward they're wallowing out the hinge. But a lot of times on 68s, you'll see people, the door, if you throw it open, it'll fall. If you do it just right, it'll always fall back down. So on the next model, the 1870, they would go to a shorter receiver because by that point they were making completely uh, new 5070 barrels and they didn't figure since they didn't have a liner, they didn't need this long nose receiver. So the model 1870s, which are quite a bit more rare than these, by the way guys, just because your gun actually says 1870 on the door does not mean it's a model 1870. The shorter nose is what makes it the model 1870. Because they made these from January of 1869, uh, that was when they first started making them, even though they're called the 1868, all the way through April of 1871. So really enough talking about it, the main differences between this and the other models is door doesn't open near as far, shorter, has a receiver. All right, enough talking about it. Let's shoot this thing. We are going to go back to half cock. Open it up. 5070. This is 70 grains of our homemade 3F black powder with a 450 grain bullet. This is my first shot with this gun. Caleb's already took a few. Let's turn around and go over here and we'll go up on the hill and see what it does at 40 yards. All right, guys, blue plate on the hill, 40 yards from this table. 5070, my first shot with this gun. I'm gonna assume it's gonna hit high, so I'm gonna aim its bottom. Yeah! Guys, 5070 is absolutely my favorite cartridge. Half cock, goes by, wing! All right, let's go over here and put one on a railroad plate. Half cock safety. Let's shoot a railroad plate, shoot the middle one. Off she goes! Half cock, out she comes. All right, let's see if we can get one clear through that. Uh, we never have yet, but let's see if we can get one clear through that propane bottle down there. I got my doubts. <laughs> I know we'll go through the front side, I just don't know about the back side. I'm really liking the trigger on this compared to the uh, 69 Cadet rifle I've been shooting. The trigger on this is considerably better and it uh, looks like we went through one side, but not the other. Ping. All right, we shot those, we shot those. Let's put one on the ghost of Cowboy Bob. I'm telling you, 5070 is my new favorite round. Wow, that hits hard. <laughs> okay. Let's see how fast we can run this gun. Hey guys, we're gonna see how fast we can run this gun. Now we're gonna do it like Gary Cooper said to do it in Springfield Rifle, even though that's not the way they would have done it. All right, this is not military in any way, shape or form. By the way, this gun is not necessarily a military gun at this point. So uh, 
it works out for it. Funny thing is, you'll see these a lot in the Indian Wars. Uh, you're gonna see these used more in the Southern Indian Wars and down in the Comanche Wars than you will the 66 in the Northern Indian Wars. So if you're in Arizona, Southern California, you know, down in that area, you're gonna see this style of gun show up because the fighting happens a little bit later. So, without further ado, one in the gun, one in the hand, one in the mouth. I heard Mr. Outdoor. You'll notice I'm beating that door coming back because I'm loading pointing down. That's how you beat the door falling back on you. If you were trying to aim even partially uphill and you throw that door, it's gonna come back on you just about every time on this particular model. This one right here, we bought for basically a song because when we got it, the stock was completely broken in three places right here at the wrist, all the way across. And the funny thing was, this is not a modern break at all. And so it had a lot of repairs that had to be done on it. And since most of these guns are 32 and a half inches long, I found it strange. This one is actually 31 and a half inches long. It's exactly one inch too short. Somebody has cut it down, but they did a very fine job and actually cut the stock and everything and put everything back in condition. It has a big divot right here. So there's a little bit of a story to this gun and I would like to know what it is. I completely redid the finish on it. I fixed this, uh, this triple break right here with a Type Bomb 3, which is guys actually stronger than the original wood. But as you can see, it also has a couple hickory dowels in there and you see all these divots in the top. Well, that is because this break was so old that the first repair that someone tried to do on it was done with square headed horseshoe nails. And after they had done that, they took and they wrapped the wrist with rawhide. And so that is a very old repair. Now this gun has a few markings. It's got a number five, another number 38 uh, marking on it. Like I said, this is an 1868. And uh, I basically, when I repaired it though, I had to resand it and I actually rematched the original dinged up finish the best I could. Turns out that literally just linseed oil and a little bit of turpentine gives it the exact same look that it originally had. Now, this break was very old because there were a couple of tacks that had been used probably to hold the rawhide on that were still in there, at least in the front, and they had blackened with age. And it wasn't a fake black, and it was, it was literally, they had blackened with age. There were also a couple of tacks down here in the bottom of the gun, uh, but kind of like a native had done something with it, maybe somebody they were very old as well and like i said this gun has seen a lot of service because you have to imagine that the crown was damaged for that would be the only reason i could think for them to only take one inch off if this had been like a bannerman cut down or something they would have cut it down quite a little ways and not just one inch that's a lot of work for just a little bit so at some point the barrel was damaged and so they fixed it and then at some point this stock was struck so hard that it not only completely shattered it in three places inside the receiver here they actually it had been hit so hard it had broken the uh, receiver in here in the bottom luckily it was in a place that does not hold any pressure it's just in the tray i'll show you right here you can't even see it since uh, caleb has fixed it up it was right down there in the tray and it was uh really bad but caleb got that welded up took it into the machine shop welded up I did the woodwork on it, fixed it back up, and the gun is running again. The story on this one's interesting because the only way this gun could have broken the way it broke was somebody, and mind you, this was done in the days of rawhide and square-headed horseshoe nails because that was the first repair. So the only way this could have broke was if, like I said, I just checked this, I'll check it again, just so you guys know, completely empty, can't fire, all the way down. Somebody had taken this gun and swung it it's the only way I could tell and hit something so hard right there. Not only did it crack this receiver, it actually broke this stock in three places. And that was after this crown had been done and this gun had been shortened because there would be no need to shorten this crown and do all this fancy work that they did up here. They did really well on a gun that had a stock broken in three places and was barely usable. One of these big old 50 caliber slugs. Very carefully, I'm going to find that because I already lost a piece of brass. Oh, we knocked it off. Can't lose this brass, about seven bucks a shot. Unless you do like everything black powder and make it yourself. 
Let's see if we can knock that other plate off. I forgot I had more in my pocket. Go for the center plate. This gun is getting hot. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do a number here on them and oh he hit the tripod. We're gonna do a number here on them, maybe knock all of them off. Probably won't knock this one off. It's pretty stout. No, but we sure hit it hard. Oh, that brass is hot. Wow, this gun is getting forever more hot. And only in a few rounds. So, let's step this thing out to 100 yards and see what we can't do a little longer range. You'll probably mess with say I'm going to aim low. Knock the dust off it. <laughs> so at 100 yards, this gun is shooting four inches high-ish. Let's take it out to 150 and see what we can't do there. 150 yards. Things start getting pretty nasty from here because that's not a very big plate. Just over it. 300. And it's 350 to that target. So uh, let's see what we can't do. Right up. Aim high. Went over the top of it. I think we went a little high, yeah. That was right about where I am. Well, guys, we're not going to get 350, but we got one more round here. Let's let Caleb shoot it and see what happens. All right, guys, 10 yards. Caleb's going to shoot his new little knockdown plate. Aim at the bottom of it for sure. Broke it. You knocked her down. All right, guys, so that's all I have for the Springfield model of 1868. Like I said, this was a gun that was used from 1869 through to basically 1871. They quit making them, but they stayed in service for quite a while. And when the government switched over to the 4570 cartridge, actually in 1874, even though the adoption came in 73, these guns would go on to still be used for a while. They would go into uh, National Guard units and eventually a lot of them would be surplused even as early as the early 1870s. So you see these a lot in native hands during the uh, uh, Indian Wars, surprisingly. And uh, you will see them, especially in the records of guns being captured, these things get captured a lot. These things and muzzle loaders probably make up about 75% uh, of all of the guns the natives were using all the way through the Indian Wars. Yes, there were a lot of lever actions, but when you look at the records of guns being brought back in, either they're keeping their lever actions and not turning them in and they're turning these in. I don't know what's happening. But the long and short of it is, very uh, used gun in the 1870s, also used for buffalo hunting. Uh, just a very great gun. This one was dead on at 100. I really started struggling at 150. And I didn't get a hit at 350, but the reason probably on that is, and I've done it before with the 66s and the 69s, but the reason probably is this particular gun seems to have the sight is bent just ever so slightly, which is not surprising after all that this gun has been through. And uh, I've tried to walk it over, but the heat mirage was just crazy. I can't touch this. Oh, it's very hot. I can barely touch that barrel after about 35 rounds a day. Anyway, still 5070, one of my all-time favorite cartridges. Trust in God. Keep your powder dry. Bye.